people at home. We're live, gathering. Welcome. We'll wait for our, should I wait for you? No, all right. Um, welcome to Gathering 2022. It's been a while since we've been together, since November, and we are happy that you all can join us from home. It's like not going to the Bills game and watching it at home, except maybe not quite as exciting. I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right, let's start before I go off script anymore. Let's stand, please. We're going to start with an oldie but a goodie because it's January, and that's what we're going to do.
Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for being with us, that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are here. Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your love, that you would fill us with your mercy this evening, that we would feel your touch on our hearts. Whether we're in the room here or online, Lord, we know that your grace can reach all. Father, we ask that you be with us tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Please take a moment and greet those around you, and I'll say hi to some of you online, too. And we can say hi to Nikki. Good to have you with us, Nikki. God bless you as well, and hi, Nan Keller. She's saying hi, gathering band and friends. <laughs> Fun fact, we actually got our name for our service from that song. Did y'all know that? That's where we got the name? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> What's that? You joined after that song. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So our psalm this evening is from Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your, your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Amen.
looks like online people like that one as well. We have Jason Wilhelm with us tonight. He says his band's been working on that one as well. It's a fun one. Yeah. And hi, Linda. <laughs> Good to have you with us tonight. We'll give John a minute to tune his guitar. Sorry, John. We put those together because they have a different tuning. And Matt Ash isn't with us tonight, so John's doing everything. So kudos to John. Yeah. Great job, always. Take over all those overwhelming things and um, replace them with your peace. Lord, we ask that you would teach us how to do that, Lord, that we, you teach us how to let go and you teach us how to find that peace with you as you rule in our hearts. Amen.
want to welcome Heather. I just saw that Heather's online, and we want to keep her, I'm going to get teary-eyed, her daughter's best friend is going through a really horrific time, and we want to keep them lift up, lifted up in prayer, as well as her parents and Heather's family. And Nikki has mentioned that his 91-year-old mom has dementia, and he's asking for her to be lifted up in prayer. We know that's a really difficult thing, Nikki, and our prayers are with you. And we want to say hi to Jane. Hi, Jane. Glad to have you with us. And Sandy's here. Hi, Sandy. Um, we are thankful to have Scott James with us. He's Bill usually opens us in September, and Scott, you always manage to preach in J January. You're like our January guy. <laughs> Love that. Okay. Um, so Acts, from the book of Acts, chapter 10, starting in verse 30. Cornelius answered, Four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me, and he said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism but he accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is this a good place to stand? Adrian, is this a good place to stand? Or do I need... Okay, <laughs> okay. Good evening. It's a real pleasure to be with you tonight. Lately, I've been asking God, for the last few months, I've been asking God, I said, God, what is it you want me to do? What, where do you want me to focus? What, what is it that I'm to do next? What's your next calling? And then I, Elizabeth asked me to, to come and speak in January, because that's my time. January is my time here at the gathering, which is great with me. And I'm happy to be here. And this is what came out. So we're going and we're looking at a time when Peter had a vision. He had a vision, and God, in his vision, he had a sheet that came down, and it had all kinds of unclean things. If you're familiar with Jewish law around eating, there's all kinds of things they're not allowed to eat. Okay, Anything with a cloven hoof that doesn't chew its cud, they can't eat. And... That's my favorite example because that's a pig. Okay, so they couldn't have pig. But there's all kinds of other things they couldn't do. And also they couldn't go into a Gentile home because if they had touched a dead person and then they went into that home, then they would be unclean. And in this dream, Peter understood that God had now canceled that law. Gentiles and the food that they eat was no longer unclean. God has said it's now clean. And he showed him that dream three times. And that's, that's important. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Anyway, they came from Caesarea, came to Peter. Peter returned to Caesarea with him. But he also took brothers from Joppa, where he was staying, with him also. We don't get to find out why he took brothers with, the, with him. But he did. He took some brothers with him. And I can just hear these Jewish brothers talking. Because Peter's already told them, you're going to a non-Jewish home, Gentile home. I can hear him talking. Maybe you can too. You know what? My wife's not comfortable with me doing this. I followed my Jewish laws my whole life, and now I'm going to go to a Gentile home. Another guy says, yeah, my older brother Harry, he's going to be on me like white on rice, Right? He's going to hear about this, and he's going to be pointing at me and saying, you hypocrite, you willingly went to a Gentile home. And I can hear him being worried about this and talking to Peter about it. But Peter's going to tell him he, heard, he had this dream three times. Now, why is that important? That's important because his Jewish brothers would be familiar with the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, Pharaoh had a dream, the same dream twice. 
And that's the dream where he was talking to, he was talking to Pharaoh and telling him there's going to be a time of plenty and a time of famine, and the time of famine is going to ruin the nation. And Daniel explained this dream to him and explained to him that because it was given to you twice, it's been firmly settled, and God's going to do it quickly. So you need to prepare. So Peter's had his dream three times. So that's, I mean, that's comforting, but they're still going about this. It's going to create conflict. So they go into the Gentile homes. They start to preach the good news, and the Spirit of God comes on the people. If you've been in a ministry where you've seen people's lives change because they accepted Christ, it's amazing. I know, I know, as sure as I'm standing here right now, I know when those brothers returned home, they had forgotten about Brother Harry, forgotten about the conflict that was going to come. They were so delighted to have been involved. I, I know I see people that have been young adults that have been on retreat. I remember those times. Those times when people confessed that it changed their lives to be on youth retreat. And I, you just know there's hope. There's hope that sometime in the future they'll give their lives to God too. So on it goes. So they returned home. But that still doesn't deal with the conflict. But it comes later. And I'm going to read from 2 Galatians. Verses 11 through 15. When Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. Now, that's the apostle Peter, the one that Jesus said, Upon you, I, is the, you are the rock upon which I'll build my church. Because he was clearly in the wrong. Before certain men came from James, and that's the apostle James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separated himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Barnabas was another person, like Paul, who God had given the message to go to the Gentiles. When I saw that they were not acting in the line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to force Jewish customs? Now, they had already decided at a council in Jerusalem that Gentiles did not have to follow, did not have to follow Jewish customs. But he publicly brought Peter to bear on this. So Peter had to make a choice. He had to say either, you're right, or he had to start giving reasons to justify what he was doing. We have no, nothing here saying what he did, but I think because it kind of ends there, and Peter and Paul remain to be good friends and fellowship of brethren, that Peter then said, okay, I understand I'm doing wrong. But the conflict continues. Now, you might not be too comfortable with what Paul did because he did it right out in public, right in front of everybody. But Scripture, he has Scripture backing him up. So just in case, just... To make sure, I'm going to go to, and you don't think badly of Paul, I'm going to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 through 38. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to preserve so that you will have done the will of God. You will receive what he has promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. Okay. So there's a few main points here. One of the main points is read Scripture. Read Scripture because people are going to ask you questions, or you're going to come up with questions that you need answered. And by having Scripture, you'll have the ammunition you need to answer back. If you read Scripture and you have questions, there are lots of people around that can answer them for you. If you need a Bible study, there are Bible studies around. I have a Bible study, 10, 10.05, on Sunday morning between the two services here at Pendle Center. Yes, this is a shameless plug, but I'd love to have you. 
okay? Okay. So read scripture. The other message here is, if you're not already involved in a ministry, find one to be involved in. Because there is no joy like finding people, being with people that decide, yes, God is good. There's nothing like it. It's amazing to be in their presence when they decide for that first time that God is good, I'm going to follow him. Even if they fall away, you know they've, God's got them, got them started, they're going to come back. There's so many youth that I've connected with over the years, I am sure they will come back in due time. And I, and I praise God for that. But there are other people, aren't there? there? There's that brother Harry. There's that brother Harry that the guy from Joppa is going to have to deal with. He's not really a believer. But he's not, he's not somebody we have to confront either. Because there's a criteria. There's a criteria that has to be met before we confront somebody about how they live. And this is how the criteria goes. I'm reading from Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verses 35 through 39. For I have come to turn a man against his father. This is Jesus talking. A daughter against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. These are strong words, but these are the commitment that Jesus is looking for. I know for me, I tried to marry the two together. There was a time in my life where I said, okay, I know God, or I thought I did. I thought I knew God. You know, I'd read the Bible several times. I'd been going to church all my life. I thought I knew God, but I also knew there were things in this world that I wanted. Materialism was one of them, okay? There were others, but materialism is enough. I wanted to have things. I wanted to have a nice car. I wanted to have a nice home. I got a nice wife. You know, there are things I wanted, okay? But that doesn't satisfy this. I didn't choose God until I finally came to the point where I said, okay, this stuff isn't making me happy. So whatever you want, whatever it is you want me to do, if it's to sell everything and move out and go be a missionary somewhere, I'll do it. That wasn't God's plan for me. He wanted me to move to New York because I had sworn over the years that I would never move here. <laughs> but here I am. Okay. And I'll also swear that following Jesus has been the greatest event in my life. I can't imagine a better life than what I have today. Never could have. Never could have asked for it. I also know that Following Christ means that there'll be conflict. Just like the men in Joppa had to follow, there's going to be conflict. Don't expect the people that once you decide to follow Christ, I know it was a surprise to me how many people didn't appreciate me following Christ. I don't know what that is doing different, but I know they knew. How they knew, I don't know. I didn't think I was acting all that different. I wasn't going and raising my hands and saying, hey, I follow Christ now. But they did. I had one relative that just hated me because I didn't condone what he was doing in his life. But, you know, he had to make his choice. But all, it is the best path. It is great. Let's close in prayer. My master, you are wonderful and a mighty God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be with all the people here. That everyone here will have an opportunity to have their questions answered. They'll see the path that you want them to take in the near future and into the, the far future. That you'll be with them and you'll bless them. 
In your name I pray, amen. Have a blessed evening. One thing that Scott mentioned, and I hope you hear it, is that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wants more from us than just knowing about him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to have a relationship with him, and he wants to have a relationship with us. One way he has done that is to let us offer this meal. Now, in the United Methodist Church, this table is open to everyone. You don't have to be a member of the United Methodist Church or this church or any church. It's Jesus Christ himself who is offering this meal to you. This is the one and greatest way that Jesus believed that you could show love towards somebody, to actually eat with a sinner. And I know we must have a few sinners here tonight, right? Would you, would you uh, repeat after me? Forgive me, Lord, because I am a sinner. I have done things that I shouldn't have done. I haven't done things that I should have done. I blindly turned my head from the needy and have been walking the wrong path most of my life. Forgive me, Lord. Let me turn in your direction and walk with you in righteousness. In this I pray in your holy name. Amen. We call this meal by several different names here. We use communion quite often. We use the great thanksgiving. But mainly it is the Lord's table. I want you to hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And this proves God's love towards us. And I can say in all confidence that in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you join with me now in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. In a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so would your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to his Father in heaven. And then he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body that's been given for you. 
as often as you eat of this, do it in remembrance of me. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to his Father in heaven. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many others for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union to Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. And now, as confident children of God, shall we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to serve a couple different ways. We are going to serve by intention. You'll be given a piece of bread. You can dip it in the cup, partake instantly. We are also have the prepackaged little cups if you don't want to do the bread thing. And if you're gluten-free, we also have them. Could I ask somebody to come and help me serve? Scott, would you like to do that? And please let us know whether you want gluten-free, the bread and cup, or the prepackaged.
Do I? 
Jesus, we thank you that you are our Father, that your name brings so many meanings, Lord, but, but the one that we can rest in is that you are our Father. Lord, you want good things for us. You want us to call us into places that bring us joy. You want us to find places where we can use the gifts that you've given to us. Lord, we thank you for giving us all that we need, even if we don't see it yet, Lord. We ask that you would continue to show us how to use those things in those ways that you've called us and you've gifted us. Lord, we thank you that we can rest in your arms. Amen. And I would be remiss not to say hello to Lori Jago. Here is a woman who listened to God, who spoke to her heart and built this online ministry of so many fabulous teachers and worship leaders. And we're so thankful for you, Lori. So welcome. Glad you could be here tonight with us. Um, I, wait, hold on, hold on the camera. Um, while um, Scott was preaching, I was, I was thinking about, you know, that idea of calling us places and doing things that might be a little bit un unnerving. And um, so I thought I would read to us a little bit from Second Peter, um, since we were talking about Peter. Um, verse 1, or I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us every great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fail. and You will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a pretty good checklist, you know. And above all, love. So, amen. Okay, you can count us in now, John. Thanks. So oh. 
we need his grace, it's always enough. Would you stand as we close with your grace is enough. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both in this night and in the month ahead. And we will see you February 21st, the third Sunday of the month. Amen.